Bruh. <laughs> Let's talk about something real quick, man. Let's talk about something. And this is why. And I'm going to talk about this because, you know, this is why it's hard, like, especially with media and especially with all these, all these things. It's hard to actually rock with the media. It's hard to even, like, especially if you just are a purist and you understand basketball and you just know what it is. It's hard to rock with them in terms of just players and in terms of where they rate them. That's my whole thing is rate everybody accordingly. If you move the goalposts for one person, move it for all. You know what I'm saying? It's just being fair. That's all my I that's what it comes down to being fair. So when I focus on this player, it's not because I want to. Like if people rate everybody accordingly, I really have nothing to talk about and I I'll just talk about what I want to talk about. But what happens is a lot of the times, nine times out of ten, a player gets over boosted based off of one game or he gets overboosted based off of a season. He gets overboosted. However, he's getting overboosted. Some of the overboosting is a little bit. Some of the overboosting is a lot. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, overboosting period, I don't rock with because at the end of the day, there's certain when you overboost this player, what happens when they overboost a player? They normally shit or they normally knock down another player to overboost this player. And that's what happens. So now I'm forced as someone who's a realist, as someone who gives IQ, that's what I do. I have to now readjust, you know, the context, give context, readjust the ratings, readjusting the scale to what it's normally supposed to be and what it really actually is. If you have the real eye of the game and you really pay attention to what's important and you understand the game, the Hooper's mentality, the Hooper's perspective. And that's where now it gets readjusted. And now I have to now knock down the next player because I have to bust, you know, and debunk narratives and all this type of stuff. And you already know how this goes, right? It's a never ending cycle. And this applies. And you saw this at full display last night with two games. And I'm going to first go into the first game. And we're going to see this way in terms of LeBron, James, and the Lakers, right? LeBron, James, and the Lakers, man. Like, <laughs> It, and it's, it's tough, man. I don't like to do this because they're going to say I'm a hater and I'm going to this and that and that and the third. Like, let's be honest. This was a straight blowout. The Suns. So you already know what I'm talking about. The Suns and the Lakers are game five right now. You know what I'm saying? Or just finished game five. And this is a pivotal game, obviously. You already know game five. Teams that win game five go to win this series. What is it? 82%, 83% of the time, right? And at the end of the day, it doesn't mean the Lakers are going to lose the series. It doesn't mean because we've seen teams win six and seven. We've seen it in the finals. We've seen it other times. Obviously, different context, different reasons for it. But at the end of the day, you can't say somebody is the best player. And then now you bring up all, you keep moving the goalposts. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If he's aging, he's aging. That's normal. Every player like Kobe, all these players have aged. They've aged. You can't pump fake and overboost their prime saying, oh, my God, this, 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 and this, and this. Yes, he played well in the bubble. First of all, the bubble shit was cap. I try to tell people that all the time. You've seen that with Miami getting swept. It was cap. There's multiple reasons for that, but I'm not even going to get into that. But if you really knew basketball, you know that bubble shit was cap. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you add the fact that even if LeBron's bubble wasn't cap, just because someone snaps in the playoffs and does well and whatever, given the circumstances, does not mean they're currently still the best player in the league. I know, obviously, you think about that and this, that, and the third and whatever, but you have to look at the play. Look at what's transpiring. Look at the eye test. You can't be the best player in the league. All these, oh, my God, he's still the best player. Oh, my God, he's still the best player. We've never seen someone who's been the best player for this long. And bring all these, all these things. And then now when it matters... Because one guy is injured and you say he's the MVP of the team. Now, I'm not even, whether they win or lose, I never care about, obviously you care about results and you want a, team, a player and a team to win, etc. You care about that, obviously. But at the end of the day, even if you don't win, as long as you're, if you're caring and you're trying and you're giving it all and going to the depth like we've seen Dane, right? And you lose, you never get blamed. The finger never gets pointed your way. You gave it your all. You gave it your all. You carried. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's where I don't even see LeBron doing that, especially now. He's not even caring. He's not even caring. We've seen him do it in 2018. Like, all those other times when he did it and they want to say he's the best player, go ahead. You could do that. But we haven't seen that for a minute. Obviously, they've seen it in the bubble, but I always said that shit was cap. This whole year, you haven't seen him be doing that. 
You haven't seen him be doing that. What tells you that he's the best player, especially when you have a guy like KD in his prime snapping? How can someone past their prime still be the best player? It doesn't even logic. It doesn't make sense. Age-wise, it doesn't make sense. You try to act like LeBron all of a sudden is absolved of all these other things that transpired for all these other greats. Everybody, no matter what, father time is going to come. You can't now and now always oh, ankles out 100%. But yet I seen him sky high, head at the rim, off the backboard alley. I seen them on Crowder. Laughing, doing a high lay on a Friday. I seen all of that. I seen all of that. I seen all of them. Them laughing. I seen all of that. And then now it's he's injured. He's not 100%. How can he not? Like, you see him high on dunks. Clowning. They were all clowning. And now he's not 100%. That's what we're going with. This is what I'm talking about. This is what frustrates me with these LeBron fans and just media in general, man. Like, it's, just, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy how they move the goalposts. They sweat. Anytime something doesn't go in their favor. Yep. Yeah. Excuse. Yeah, this is what it is. Like, come on now. Anybody else, you're saying if he's the best player, he's got to carry. And I, like I said, you don't even have to win the game. Just carry. Put the team on your shoulder. Give me buckets. Like I said, LeBron, even if his ankle was 50%, be a skilled scorer. You don't have to run into the paint to score. And how could you be the best player if all you need is the paint? We've seen that with Giannis. But now that LeBron's doing the same thing. It's a, it's a knock for Giannis, but it's not a knock for LeBron because of what? This is what I be saying. This is why in my GOAT conversations, like, this is exactly exactly what I be saying. You don't know which LeBron you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? He does have lack of ability. Now, before when he had no pressure, you already know his ability was potent, especially with Cleveland, early Cleveland. His ability was potent, and he would try and carry, and he would be snapping all the time. I've seen, You've seen games. There's marquee games wherever he's been, he... Cavs, second stint with the Cavs, you know what I mean? You know, even with the Lakers, you've seen games where he takes over. But at the end of the day, this is a pivotal game. You've seen this exact same thing when he was up 2-1 versus the, versus, the, um, versus the Golden State Warriors with Steph and no, he had no Kyrie and no love. There's no KD there yet. Up 2-1, do you take over? No, he goes 7 for 22 and he doesn't take over. It's not the same. It's not the same. Not being a skill scorer. That has to be applicable. At some point, there has to be, there has to be some context for this. There has to be some okay. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't see him always do Dame. Why? Because when it matters, it's about the ability. When you lack the ability, and all you could do is run into the paint majority, and that's what you live and die by. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be hindered when you have another paint guy sitting there and drumming. You've seen the worst pick and rolls you've ever seen in your life. You know what I'm saying? And like yesterday, you've seen some of that. Because it's just two paint mans running pick and roll. That's why I always said AD was the most important player of this team. And I always said this from time. Even from the bubble. Even from all of that. I've always said AD, AD is the only skilled scorer on that team like that. And that's what always is the best player. That was always is, you know, the most crucial player. Because you open up everything. Your ability opens up everything for everybody else. For LeBron. His pain is open because of the AD popping ability, AD being at the three-point line, you know what I'm saying? Whether he hits it or not or he's efficient or not, he's still a threat. You have to honor him. You have to pay attention to him. He can face up, step back. He's like, he has all-world ability. KD-like ability, he does in a big man version, right? And so when you look at it from that perspective, like you have to, that's why he's the most skilled player on the team and the most impactful in terms of what he opens up. We already know they didn't have shooters. We already know this, that, and the third. They didn't even have OD shooters last year as well, too, in the bubble. But AD being there opened up, especially that's why LeBron could run into the paint and be LeBron and score in the paint majority of the times because AD was at the five. I tried to tell y'all. The White only played sparing, sparingly low, you know, small stretches, uh, you know, low minutes. That's what he did. But now you take AD out, then you have to play Drummond more. Can you really play Gasol OD? Can Gasol hit five threes? Is he enough? No, they're still going to sag off Gasol. They're still going to shrink the paint, shrink the floor, flood LeBron. Because at the end of the day, what is happening? Gasol, you better make it. We don't even honor you. At least 80 day honor. So there's some spacing. A lot of spacing. And that's what I was saying coming into the game. If you follow me on IG, I was saying he's not going to. People were saying he's going to run into the paint and he's going to have to bully and whatever. He can't do that. 
He can't do it. Drummond is there. He can't do that. He's going to have to be a skilled scorer. And that's where you understand the ability. And I always was saying, LeBron was one of those guys where when he gets really older, in terms of he loses some of his athleticism, they say his ankle's injured. Let's say his ankle's injured and we cop into that as if his head was in the rim at, wasn't at the rim punching. What's going to happen is he's going to really get exposed in terms of the lack of ability. He should be going to the post way more. He should be, you know, doing like I showed what he was snapping versus the Raptors, the LeBron to Raptors. That, you know what I mean? That's what he was doing. Bare post fades and going to work where people say he's the gold off of that game. Showing you ability. That's what I was waiting for. That's what he has to do in order to win that game. And it's possible that game was very winnable. And you even seen Chris Paul even get re-injured. That game is very winnable. But what happened? Devin Booker is showing ability. Then Suns are showing ability in terms of splashing threes. And that's where you've seen the game just get blown out and blown out and blown out. LeBron hit his first his first layup and his first jump shot. I'm like, okay, see, he's going to do ability. And he kept shooting jump shots. But it was pff, 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 rebound, 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 you know, these sound. And then that's now what changed his. Now he wasn't as confident. And you saw him start passing, 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 passing. Caruso three, this player three, this player three. And you already know, like Lakers, I told people, when Lakers shoot elite, they're, it's, it, like that same shooting you saw versus the Nets when every man was injured in the regular season and all of that stuff with the Lakers, that's not indicative of them. Those shooters aren't going to look like that when they play with LeBron because LeBron is holding the ball and they don't have no rhythm. So the shooting, how they look, is completely different. There aren't elite shooters enough to just get only two shots and go two for two. Only three shots, go three for three, and have rhythm like that in order to just be shooters, straight up shooting, all world ability. They don't. They're rhythm shooters, and they're not shooters. They're like they're players in terms of Crusoe can create, go to the paint, running, you know what I mean? That's what he's going to do. Shooter, you already know, same type, of, same type of play. Kuzma also, too, isn't just a shooter. Give me the rock. Give me some touches. Give me a step back. Then my shooting is going to be different. Like a lot, of like, and that's why Kuzma even looks way worse than he actually, his ability actually is because it's a play, a one dimensional role. And this goes for Macklemore. This goes for a lot of them. They only get it in limited situations. So they're not potent enough to just be out the gate splashing like that. And you've seen that. You've seen that at hand. You've seen that all the time. And that's why I was saying that bubble shooting was cap. It was cap for a lot of teams. It was cap. Fans and the shooting, the depth perception in terms of the rim. All of that without the wall behind of the bubble, like all of that stuff matters. And if the bubble shit was capped, there's so many reasons why it was capped, but I'm not even going to go fully into it, into it. So like, again, you have to pick and choose. It's either LeBron is the best player. And if LeBron is the best player in your eyes and you're riding with that, then hold him accountable and say, you know what, LeBron, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. LeBron, you sus the runs. LeBron, this is on you. You could have carried. If you at least carried, you can't expect role players to all of a sudden carry. They would step up off your back. They would step up off what you do, and then now they only have to make a one, two shots, right? As opposed to they have to get 20, like you want five point per game scores all of a sudden in the series to now get 25. That's what you want. That's realistic in this offense, in the LeBron offense. That's realistic. At least with Luka, what is Luka doing? In all games, he's snapping. Because it's the Luka offense. If it's going to be the Luka offense, I'm going to be the Luka, and then we ride with it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand, like, this is his cap. A lot of it is cap. At the end of the day, hold him accountable. If he's going to be the best player in your eyes, then if he's the best player in your eyes, then you have to honestly hold him accountable and, uh, you know, hold his feet to the fire when he susses the runs. But now if he is, if you're not, if you're going to give excuses and say his ankle, his this, his that, and all these accelerate, uh, you know, auxiliary excuses that you're going to use and all this excess type of, you know, you know, cap logic, capology, <laughs> if that's what you're going to use, then at the end of the day, now you have to adjust him. He's not the best player. You can't use all these excuses and still say he's the best player. And you can't use, you know, uh, not give no excuse. And then say he's the best player and not, and, and not hold him accountable. You have to pick and choose. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Which, one, which ledger are you going to die on? And that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. And for a lot of y'all that give the excuses, it's okay. There's nothing wrong. He is 36. Like, you can't expect him to have the same expectations at 36. You expect, yes, that's true. So if he's 36, you can't be the best player in the league at the same 36. Well, there's other guys in their prime. It doesn't work like that. Pick and choose. Pick one. Pick one. That's what it comes down to, man. And, like, obviously the Suns, like, you already know, Devin Booker is elite. 
Devin Booker, you already know what he's doing. He did have some games where he struggled, but he's getting double teamed and whatever and this, that, and the third. And Chris Paul not being Chris Paul right now, you could double team him, force Chris Paul to shoot. So he's going to have to now, obviously, you know, I'm not going to pass this. We're struggling. I'm going to shoot these. So he's going to shoot contested. He's going to shoot double teamed. He's going to shoot, you know what I mean? And he can still score those, but obviously, you know, is, is, that one is tough. You've seen that, like, you, it, there's, there, you know, in his first playoffs, I don't expect him to make over double teams every single shot and just kill like that. But at the end of the day, he still had a, he's still having a great series for his first series ever. You're seeing him still be efficient when it matters at big games. You're still seeing him do what he's doing. Devin Booker is different. The biggest game, you, what did he do come out the gate? What did he do coming out the gate? Like, and this is, I'm happy for Devin Booker that he's on this scene. He's facing LeBron and he's killing. And man, they're seeing what elite looks like. He's always been this from the time, the dawn of time. But, oh, my God, he's not a winner. He's not this. Everything winning and all this stuff in the league is situational. It really is. If you're really that caliber of player, you're always elite. You're always elite. Now, obviously, there's levels to winning in terms of this player, how is the intangibles, what he does, and, you know, all those type of stuff. If he's a killer in the clutch, like, obviously, those matter. But in terms of just overall ability, in terms of overall he's on a bad team and stuff like that, like, he's him being on a bad team is the reason why, like, you – People can't even name the players who he played with. He can't even, people can't name the players who he's played with in the past. So, like, come on now. He's always been this guy. Now he's on the scene. Now he's has a better team. And this is what I expected. This is what I anticipated. This is why I said Phoenix in six, which I believe they should win in six. This is why I said Phoenix coming into the year was going to be a top three seed. They were the second seed. Everything I said was exactly, what happened exactly like I was going to, like I said it was going to happen. You have all world closers and Chris Paul, even with Chris Paul injured, you see how his mentality, how his IQ, how they just bleds and feeds throughout the whole team. And in a minute, Chris Paul is somewhat similar like to himself. It's blowout. It's a win in game four. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Like it comes down to LeBron has to be a skilled player. At this day and age, he can't just run and blow by guys. Guys are more athletic than you. Guys have their body up. He can't just muscle guys like, especially when you have another guy in the paint with you. If you had a, you don't know, yet you, you know a Giannis type of offense with bare guys on the perimeter or AD, you know, is there where he's on the perimeter and he's sacrificing being on the perimeter, then you could do that. But when you don't have that, you're not just gonna run and blow by. You're not just blowing by Crowder. You're not just blowing by Bridges. You know, he's obviously he uses his strength to cut off Bridges on his spin. But Crowder has body, he has girth, he has muscle. You're not just blowing by him. Like, that's what you're saying is cap. That bubble stuff was cap. He liked the tweet. He said it's cap. You're not just blowing by him. You got to be a skill scorer. If you were to face Kawhi and them, you got to be a skill scorer. With guys who have contact and girth and, and they have your size and athleticism and they could slide and cut off, you could see in certain defenders, the Jimmy Butlers, the Jay Crowders, the Kawhis, right? Stuff like that. OG. The list goes on. When LeBron plays those players, he has to be a skilled player. He can't just run into the paint because they cut him off and they have ability in terms of defensive awareness and defensive cutoff. Their body type is perfect to guard LeBron. It's more so he has to be a skilled scorer. And that's where you see a lot of cap. That's where you see a lot of things changing. So, you know, obviously, if you look at it from that perspective, like, man, the Suns, I have them winning in game six. Obviously, we'll see how it transpires. We'll see how it pans out. I'm not saying the Lakers can't win two straight games, but at some point, LeBron is going to have to be a skill scorer. LeBron is going to have to turn back the clock, whatever the case is. If he can't, then this is going to adjust and give y'all a new updated, update your information. It's going to give y'all a new realization. He's not the best player in the world. He hasn't been for a minute, but it's going to give you a new realization. It's going to give you a new, okay, you know what? I have to adjust. I have to, like, it's, people are going to wake up and smell the coffee. And then a lot of people are still going to, you know, He's 100%. He's not 100%. Like, it makes no sense how he's not 100%, but his head is at the rim. Sky high. Head over the, head over the rim, like, on a dunk. Like, are you serious? That's not 100%? Y'all are capping. When he was killing, it's not 100%. Y'all didn't bring up the ankle one time. The minute he lose, now you bring up the ankle. Like, come on now, man. It's just, you have to, even from earlier in the season, he, this is how he was moving. It's really, he's been moving like this for a minute. Even in the bubble, he's been moving like this. He's been grounded on layups. But then when he now, that's the thing with LeBron. His bounce is at a stage now where it's able to be shown when he has no one in front of him and just going for a straight dunk, going for an alley, stuff like that. You see that as his athleticism at its best. But in terms of blowing by, in terms of everyday quickness, mobility, 
change of directions. It's not the same athleticism that he could get away with before. It's not the same. And that's what it's been for a minute. And that's why you see him have to be skilled in order to win. Versus Golden State, 51 points. You've seen a lot of jump shots. You're seeing a lot of his best games. You're seeing a lot of jump shots. And that's where, he, you know, his ability at the end of the day, how potent is it? Is it something that lasts forever? Or is it something that only lasts for moments? And that's how LeBron has always been in his career. And that's why I don't have him as the GOAT. That's why I don't have him as a skilled, skilled player because those are anomaly games if you look at it in the grand scheme of everything. You have to just, pay, you have to just be honest. And I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not hate. People are going to think of it as hate. But at the end of the day, you just have to be honest. I mean, you have to just wake up and smell the coffee and just, you know, just be, just be honest to what the footage tells you. The footage tells you everything, whether you have the wherewithal or the unbiased mind or the mind to see with a trained eye. That's where you now will actually know the truth of what really transpires. But what happens is people do sometimes have the eye, but they're biased. So they cap because of the player they love or like, right? And then some guys just love the player and they don't have no trained eye. So they don't even know what they watch nor what they see in, right? So it's one or the other. And I'm just the one of the few, right? There's guys out there who do it, but it's one of the few that have the trained eye and don't have biases. You know who you like and you know who you love, but you still have, you know, you still have an eye for the game. When you have a real trained eye, it's hard to be biased because you can't just sit there and lie to yourself and lie and say cap things because at the end of the day, you have a trained eye. So you really know what's happening. You know what's transpired. So you know for you to say something else, you have to cap so much that it's like, it's just, it's hard for you to do that for your peers. So, you know, there's guys out there, but at the end of the day, it's still, it's still a, 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 a outnumbered battle. It is. The masses are what I've said. So, you know. We'll see how it transpires. 80, I, I think they should shut him down. Like, it's, you know, it's just, do you really? You're the seven seed. What is the chances of a seven seed winning a ring? It's very slim. It's very slim. So you already should, especially if he's injured and stuff like that, don't push him. Don't, you know, you don't want to mess up the next season, right? You don't want to, like, come on now. You'd rather have a full, no COVID, no nothing, have a full, strong season. Just the, the ch Let LeBron, if he can't carry, he can't carry. You know what I mean? Don't rush AD back. You already seen how rushing KD back. You seen how like you're gonna suss someone's prime, suss someone, suss the opportunity to get a you know some future name stuff like that. Like, come on now, you don't want to mess up the future. At some point, you have to realize that okay, you know what? This was always a suss season. All this stuff happened, and it's unfortunate. It is what it is. AD's injured. Don't rush him back. Just run with the punches with LeBron. If it works, it doesn't work. Then we move forward. You know, we move forward and have a refreshed refurbished, healthy, strong season in terms of next season going into it. And then we go from there. That's what that should be the focus. You have to pick and choose. You have to be wise about when, you know, you still have a ring. I know, obviously, you don't, it's like, oh, the bubble feels cap and you want to defend, but it is what it is. You have to read, read and react, update your information and learn, you know, change what you do based on what's at hand. And that's what, you know. That's what the, the Lakers need to do. So we'll see if this transpires. We'll see, obviously, game six. You know, we'll see what happens. Is it a, a closeout? It's going to be the hardest game for the Suns. A closeout game is always the toughest game. And, you know, CP3 got banged up again, which I don't like. And we'll see how, again, he's ailing. That could be another blessing in disguise for LeBron to carry. Like, you have another one. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Basically, Booker versus LeBron. What happens, right? It, 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 so, you know. The CP3 been injured this whole time, too. They didn't say nothing when it was AD LeBron and the CP3 was injured. They didn't, you know, and then now AD is injured and now CP3 somewhat getting back. Now it's, you know, it's just media, man. It's media, media, media. Anyways, you know, we'll see how that pans out. We'll see how that pans out, man.